Music for snow. Music to dance in the snow by. I was just going to say that. Hold on a second. I got issues here. You were going to say what I said? Well, you said music for snow, and then I was said music to... I was thinking of music to go to the dump by, but... Yeah, to slide through slush. Hold on. I'm just trying to figure out with. how to get my hoodie on over my headphones. Yeah, you want to be cozy. There we go. Oh, that looks so nice. That looks now so I'm cozy. in this little cave... Where nothing can hurt me. <laughs> you guys, she's got her hoodie over her earphones, as she likes to call them, even though they're headphones. But Head, headphones. I'm going to take a picture, because your head looks a little bit like an E.T., because really? it's a little s- huge with the, the earphones okay. on. Now let me get my I'm gonna get the microphone out. Get rid of this mic stand. Get my that thing. Software update? I don't think so. Not What's right stuck? Now. What's stuck here? What's that? Uh. What's the matter? Oh, um, something. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Hold on, everybody. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Christina fixes everything. Ah, uh, cables. She's my hero. Cable expert. Okay. Now I'm ready for the show. Okay. Which is 11th Hour Radio with Christina Stikos and Emily Howe. WFVRLP 96.5. <laughs> what? You look so stupid. She's taking my picture and uh, calling me stupid. I don't think you're gonna like that picture. I probably I'm not. not. I'm not gonna post it without. Maybe you permission. better. Sh- maybe you better show it to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. She's gonna show it to me. <laughs> oh well, that's beautiful. <laughs> Well, I kind of like it. It's cute. Wow, but you can't see my earphones. Wait, I can make... It just looks like you have a big head. That's what I love, though. See? I oh, don't like... she likes to I have a big head. What about this you... one? Do you like this one? Uh, it's slightly better. Here, you want my earphones to be showing? Would that make How it better? How about this one? That covers your mouth completely. Ooh. Do you like that one? No. Oh, no, okay. Really. Well, you pick. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll... Sh- or s- okay. Or I'll pick... Oh, God. We're a little slap happy. Cause it's, it's, it was well, very, very hard happy to, to be get alive. here. Happy to be alive was, right now. It was so hard to get here. I got it was... stuck in my driveway. I cursed out everything I could think of. Including you <laughs> I... at one point. I was like, Damn it, Christina! I don't have to be down here today! I, know, I cursed I know, John I a bunch because yeah, he wasn't he was there gone. to help get me yeah. out. I cursed the snow. I cursed the lamb who made me like be late to get out to the car. Anyway, like if I had more time, I could have maybe... Not, I don't know. Yeah. I cursed the fact that I completely cleared off the car before school, and then it was completely another six inches on top of it by the time I got out a what about hours later. What about the Snow Queen? Shouldn't you curse the Snow Queen? Snow Queen is my horse. Oh. And she's nice. Okay. She was happy with this. I see. She likes snow. I like, okay. I like snow, you know, in... 
in the right at the proper times. Doses. Yeah, I I like snow most of the time, but I don't like to drive in it. I am not a super well, thrilled winter driver. You know, you have what like a mile? Do you have a mile to go? Less than a mile. Well, I have my back road is a is a mile, but then you get on Stratford Road, and they <coughs> hadn't done anything with Stratford Road today, so I couldn't see it. I, I couldn't see. tell where the yeah, road was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my windshield wipers just kept smear, like doing the smear thing. So everything was yeah. wavy and watery. So I couldn't even see through my windshield really well. Yeah. I just wasn't paying attention to the storm. It crept up on me. I went outside just, you know, to, uh. and it, it, there was eight inches probably in my house. Yeah. That's about what we have too. Yeah. And there were the road, they don't plow the road this time of year. No. Why they, just, they? they just don't do it. They it's just, spring. Yeah. For God's just, sake. It's like 32 degrees, eight inches. My, my road was not plowed and I had to go three three miles on oh, unplowed not, not road at least it's downhill i know i'm t- so we're i'm lucky. freaking out about how am i gonna get home now so we get here but then we can't Ugh, get back i have a big show this evening i've got like That's so much right. stuff to you had do. a dress rehearsal I have to last night freaking legs and that is gonna take hours because it doesn't take hours you don't understand no <laughs> it doesn't take <laughs> it me is hours. march it's like a brush hog type of situation okay and so you ju- just you don't have sharp Razors? I do. I do have a package of brand new sharp razors. I think you'll be okay. I'm just saying, it's going to take me some time. Well, so I I actually developed some uh, technique for driving in slush. Yeah. Okay, so this is a tip for everybody. If you're driving in slush, which is basically what we drove down here in. No, I was... Well, once we hit the pavement, pavement. it was slush. I I can drive in slush. That's fine. Well, I, I don't like slush. So you just, I just imagine that I'm like super, super fat and heavy. And so I feel like weighing down the car. Oh, it works. It actually works. Try it. Cause you, I don't have to imagine. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I did yesterday? I was freaking out and I wrote like one of those really complainy ranty Facebook posts about like I listed off everything that was just pissing me off right then. Yeah. Um I left it private because every time did I write I, did I see it? No. Oh, I like that kind. No. But some of it was stuff that I ranted to you about, like like the mean nursing home lady who wanted me to oh. bring my lamb there and then I told her my lamb was too big to be safe and he's not hygienic anymore. He's like gross yes. and leaky and stinky. Like when they're little you can really contain all the bodily right fluids and stuff but this is a big lamb that he's pure people he's pubescent yeah he just is practically not. and she was out of state and she wanted me to bring my lamb on a random day that she had named and i said i'm sorry i would love to but i can't for all these reasons and i had to work like it was just tons of reasons yeah she's just she's having and a she, hard time she said something along the lines of that i i must not really care about seniors that i probably just do this lamb thing for attention and it like really i just felt like, are you kidding me? Like, you should post that. No, I, that was only one of my rants. You don't have to I say her. so many rants. Yes, but that would be interesting to just get people's comments on it. And of course, you don't have to put her name. Just put the no, comment I don't, and actually, say I don't somebody, even remember and her name. Say somebody was, said this to me. She was from a nursing home that we've never visited before out of state. So, I mean, I'm not... Yeah, I just, think it's, I just think it's an interesting commentary. But on she was how, really catty. Pro, on projection. totally hurt my feelings. And this is a whole... Well, long, she must work at a nursing home just to, like, just... For because attention. why? Because she attention. likes to change adult diapers. Yeah. For attention. Exactly. It's just as absurd. She's anyway, up. it made me really upset because as soon as somebody says something nasty to me, I immediately think, oh my God, is what is that what like everyone thinks? So I started freaking out. Yeah. And just thinking, I don't know. Anyway, so I'd well, written this huge long Facebook rant listing like six different things that I was really angry about or sad about or upset about oh, this week. Yeah. And then... um. Oh my God! How did I start? What was the beginning of my know. story? I don't know. It's just like now I want to know. Like what? Are I did What are the five it. other things? Or I, at least give me okay, one. Hold on. Just give me one. I didn't post it because, for many reasons, my brother-in-law always makes fun of me whenever I post complainy things. Yeah. Although I kind of feel like rants tend to be Facebook's like bread and butter. Have you ever noticed? I mean, that's a good well, majority of the stuff that's key, on there. Yeah, it keeps it interesting. Okay, hold on, I'll go find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But why was I talking about this? I have no idea. You must know. I started some... Um, 
Uh, was it uh, to some kind of weird conspiracy theory? No. At uh, first I complained about I the lamb one. for a really long time. I have one. While you're looking that up, I have a really weird conspiracy theory. What? Called the Mandela effect. Have you heard of this? No. Oh, it's so unusual, but it has so to... You didn't make it up. It has no, a name. No, so. no. But it has to do with Timmy falling down the well. Timmy falling... No, you, we already talked about no, this. No, Timmy ma- falling down... You know what? My sister... T- oh, you, you talked to Jen... Jen, I know what you're talking about now, the Mandela theory. Yeah, the fact that Timmy never fell down the well, but we all assume that, and all kinds of things that we've always assumed that aren't really true. Yeah, Jen is obsessed with this. No, but they're actually true, because we, because Timmy did fall. Why would Timmy not fall Timmy down? Timmy didn't fall down a well. Yes, he ever. did. No, he didn't. No, you're believing Wikipedia. Lassie fell down the well once. Okay, listen, listen. Okay. You're, you're just, bully- you're buying into the whole Mandela effect thing. You're. I, my sister has lectured me on this saying, a long time. Yeah, because somebody's erasing history. They're erasing history and they're changing the timeline. That's gonna, what. That's gonna, what's going you're gonna on. You're going to go off on the moon landing soon, aren't you? Okay, what? Yeah, maybe we didn't land on the moon. I'm pretty sure we did. Well, that we a just don't know. To we think. have to question everything. Like, who's you have got to question time for everything. All this? Like, I, I just don't have time for all that. Like, faking well, all these things. You that's don't stupid. have to. That's just leave it to other people then. All right. And when the world falls apart, you'll say, "What? What's happening?" And we'll all be like, "Told you so." Okay. All right. So that's just be prepared for that. But here, just tell me, you probably explained this to me before, but why would they have an episode where Timmy falls down the well? They don't. No, excuse me, where Lassie falls down the well. Right. Because they, they La- do. No, but Lassie's the one that's supposed to go get help. That's the whole premise behind the whole show. I don't, I don't think it is. Lassie goes to get help. I think the premise behind the whole show is... A boy and his dog who sometimes does heroic things. No, and sometimes just, they do heroic things together. You better you better talk to Jen more because she, she right. gets it. I, she does. Jen is Jen is obsessed with this. She's been trying to tell us all about it forever. And we just sort of shut her ears and say, la, la, Okay, la, here's la, one la. for you. Here's one. What? How do you spell Fruit Loops? <laughs> Come on. Come on. F-R-O-O-T-L-O-O-P-S. When you were a kid? No. That's that's the fake version of Fruit Loops, actually. No, it's like no. regular fruit. F R U I T. Yes, it is. O P S. But that's not what it says on Wikipedia now. What does it say? F R O O T. Fruit Loops. Did they? That's the fake version of Fruit Loops, I think. Oh my god! <laughs> I just have to look up too much <laughs> These stuff. Things you're, are important. You're overloading my my googling now. Okay. Yeah, right. So I complained about the lamb for a long time on this rant thing. I complained I complained about the fact that I can't ever sleep in past 4.30 in the morning because John and Eli can't get themselves. I complained about this to you already, I think. Today? Not today. <laughs> well. <laughs> Let's go over it again. That they can't seem to figure out how to like get themselves oh, yeah. fed and dressed that's and leave a, the house. That, that, like a that, grown man and a 14-year-old boy. That's in the category of ongoing. Awesome, awesomeness. That is ongoing. Okay, that doesn't change. Some things don't change, and that's what makes you love home. It's like the laundry. Do you remember the laundromat in Chelsea? Remember? Yeah, I do. It was right next to the pizza place. You could go and eat pizza while you were Yes, your and how and I feel so nostalgic for the laundromat. And then I stopped the from it. pizza place smelled so well, good. Well, here's the thing is I felt like what was I nostalgic about? Was I nostalgic about like a couple of washing machines and a couple warm, of dryers? It smelled nice. Like a place to go in your town where it's yeah. warm and it smells nice. Yeah. So what you're that we lack it. We lack now. I know. We don't have that place. Oh, and I told you that I ripped like the, the part off my car, right? What? Yeah, I what? ripped that part off my car. What? I told you that last. What? Time. I told you that already. Of what did you tell me? Off what my car? What about your car? That I ripped that random part off of it in the mud. Oh, I see. You're going back to your list. Yeah, I thought sorry. you were talking about like the laundromat. And I'm still about talking car, about the laundromat, which I but I'm understand still the connection. I've got a backlog here of looking up things that are finally loaded. So okay, yes, well, the laundromat is a place to see everybody in your <clears> town, but except for not anymore because it burned down, and people usually have washing machines now. Okay, and I don't like to see people anymore. In yeah, my town really. So I don't. I would be sad if I had to go well, to the laundromat. Here's here's what happened: it feels is that we awkward. slid. Just imagine that we slid between similar realities. Like we slid a, over to a, a similar parallel timeline, and that's why the people in town seem weird, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Or we have visited hollow decks. Ho- hol- hollow decks. What? <laughs> I just realized why I got off on this tangent of ranting in the first place because you said you have to weigh yourself down in the car. Yeah. And I I pretend that you're heavy and fat and I said, I don't have to pretend. And I said, this is how I started this. I said, 
because yesterday I sat there and without even noticing it, ate an entire box of Girl Scout cookies. And then I reached for another one and there were no more because I ate them all. And I did it while I was writing this rant. That was my whole So it was rant, point. ranting with eating cookies went together in some kind of nice yeah, cozy, kind of like the eating. laundromat. It was comfort, comforting. It was so comforting. So cookie, Girl Scout cookies, laundromats, ranting on Facebook when you're like, yeah. you know, nobody, <laughs> what? Nothing. I just poked something on my phone. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I know, <clears throat> yeah, you don't know what a holodeck is. I thought you said hollow deck. Well, I said hollow deck because I didn't really know how to say it, but it's hollow, hollow deck, like a, like a hologram. It comes from hologram, oh. like H O L O hollow hollow right. deck. Yes, all right. Holodeck. Tell me what a so holo it's a it's a staging deck is. it's a staging environment where participants may engage in different virtual reality uh, with like little masks experiences, like the like the kind you stick on your head, like hats. No, the little goggles, the virtual reality goggles. Oh. Or is this some um, hoodoo voodoo thing you're talking about? This is bigger. This is expanding yeah. into a whole reality. It's not just like, you, and it doesn't require putting a like a contraption on your head. It's okay. just what has happened with reality. And like that's drugs? why, that's why, drugs? that's why your box of cereal is saying something different than oh, it right. said. Oh, right. That's what I was going to look up. Yeah. And no, I feel like there's a fake version of Fruit Loops that, that, to to um, get past the copyright issues, <clears throat> they say O U. I mean O O T. Hold on. Whoops. I okay. Can't even spell she's going to do her type of research, Sweet. which of course is flawed. But Fruit it's okay. You can go ahead. Loops. I'll just have to go look at my house. Yeah. Well, I I do miss the laundromat. Yeah, no, I guess you're right. They do have the stupid. It says on Wikipedia. Yeah, you can be so O-O-T. you can be nostalgic for the most stupid things. I mean, you're this kind of true. I'd say I was maybe nostalgic for the laundromat because I might go sit in the laundromat um, to wait for my kids to get out of school or something like that, which is a nostalgic memory for me that I would be, you know, waiting for them to get out of school. I like that the laundromat has some white noise going on. Yes, it helps so you think when you have to talk to people in there. There's. It's not that awkward, the, the loud, glaring silence in between yeah. while I'm trying to think of something intelligent to say. Yeah, until the dryers stop. When the dryers stop, because in Chelsea, there was probably only two dryers. Probably. I That's mean, a it, heck of a laundromat. It was a small laundromat, granted. I think there so were more it, than two so dryers. So there was a lot of times when a couple dryers would just stop. And there was the big one, too, right? Or that was a washer. They no, always I had don't the think, big one. I don't think it's not in Chelsea. I, I don't there think there was Chelsea one at had the back. That. You have to go to Barry. You have to go to Soap Opera. There's a big one in South Royalton. Laser wash. But you don't want to you don't want to wash your real clothes in it because everybody Sparkle and their wash. brother uses it to wash their horse blankets. That's what they do. I get I can't let that stop me from washing th- no, big things. I, I mean, you telling me I can't wash my blankets and my sleeping bags? You can, but there's probably some there's residue of horse hair. I don't mind horse or, hair. Or it's manure, clean, or but something. it's clean. No, manure washes down. Horse hair is clean by the time it, my stuff gets in there. That's if true, it, I guess. if it's going to accumulate horse hair, it's been washed. Me. I have already. some on me right now, but it's not. Oh, this isn't horse hair. Horse hair. I don't. Hair. I don't care about I had horse my hair. Big suit on when I was near the horses. Yeah, horse hair is pretty all right. Yeah, I mean they make stuff out of horsehair, right? They make stuff that's um, they make jewelry, um, but not out of their. What fur. about pillows? They make pillows. Nope. No, no, they make that out of their manes and tails, not their actual oh. body fur. Well, you can get you can get pillows made out of like cattle. Um, that's their whole hide, <laughs> so the hair isn't coming off. But it's still hair. It's the hair, right? But it's not, and shedding. it's even attached. Yeah, it's but it's nice. That's the you want to put your face on it. You want to like be close to animals in My any way that you can. Dad had this cow, this beef cow that he raised for beef when we were growing up, but he got kind of really attached to it, but he still killed it for beef. But then he just used its skin and he made a truck seat color cover out of out of um Manuel, what was the cow's <laughs> name? And it was sort of slippery and Manuel. fuzzy. So when we rode in his truck, we would ride on its big red and white spotted cow hide that's like courtney and her new couch 
And I asked her, she, she said she's so excited about getting this leather couch. Mm. And I said, but you're, aren't you worried about sliding off it? Oh, no. Because I feel like leather couches s- no. are not practical because as soon as you get on them, you slide no, off. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Slanted, I had my first husband before I married him. I came in his living room and he had leather couches and it was a real turnoff. It was like a red flag and I should have run out of there as fast as I could. Oh, well, that's not as much of a red flag as my first husband who had like milk cartons for crates, I mean, for furniture. So (laughs) I would choose leather couches over milk crates. No, it's just a facade. No. No, it's just how much money you have. I mean, you can get leather couches if you have more money, but it's the same as milk crate furniture. I like leather couches. You don't slide off them. Honestly, what's the difference between milk crate furniture and leather couches? I don't know. They're both jerks. It's both. You sit on them both. One's more comfortable. But the trouble with leather couches is not the sliding. It's that if you sit on them, they're kind of cold until you warm up your little spot. Right, right. That's not super fun. But let's look at the opposite side. Like, what what's to like about them? What do you like about a leather well, couch? Well, there's two different there's two different schools of leather couches. There's the leather couches that are, like, puffy and recliners, which yeah. I don't like at all. They puffy. usually have built-in cup holders and things. And oh, for guys, like they're, for football. They're not, they're not That's cool. Not for My g- parents have a kind of a crossover one. Women don't need cup one. holders. It doesn't have cup holders, Do you need a but cup it reclines. Holder? No, just tell me. How many women use cup holders as compared to men? I think the percentages are going to be really I askew. don't know. I use them in the car with my teacup. That's different. But that's it. Yeah. I've never used a cup holder anywhere else in public. Yeah. But then there's the kind of old school, like, um, Chesterfield leather couches that are pretty cool. You see them in a lot of old recording studios. Hey, have you ever seen that guitar YouTube channel that's called Off the Couch? No. They just find like emerging <clears throat> singers, songwriters, guitar players, and they have this cool old leather Chesterfield the couch, couch and they put them on this couch. A Chesterfield. That's a gun, isn't it? Chesterfield? No, that's a Winchester. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or no, it's a cigar. Uh, Chester. Chester Field is a cigarette, not a cigar. See? Wait, but let me, I have maybe I'm brain. saying it wrong. I got to look it up. <clears throat> anyway, or there's the leather couches that are kind of, you know, swanky with the, the big studded nail heads all around them. You know what I'm talking about? And those ones yeah, are for those people are like who... For, those are for who, torture chambers. No, they're not. They're for people who have like spaniels and go fox hunting. And stuff, and have fireplaces. But let's go back to the Chesterfield. Let me just make because sure because that I'm, sounds I'm very aristocratic. You. Is that an aristocratic couch by chance Let me that just only make aristocrats sure. can sit on? Do you have to have certain pedigrees sure I'm saying for the that name couch? Right. It is. It is. Who, Chesterfield who gets sofa. a Chesterfield okay. sofa? Sofa. That's an old word. Who I calls saved a, a couple couch on a Pinterest sofa? Pinterest because I, I like. Do you use them. the word sofa? I switch it up between couch and sofa. You do. So yeah. you say sofa. But Sometimes. that's, is, how did that come about? Do you say you would, basement or cellar? Oh, basement, for God's sake. I've never said cellar in my life. I only switched <laughs> as an adult to basement. It was always a cellar growing up. <laughs> There's something wrong with you? No! It's because you didn't grow up in Vermont. No, I just, <laughs> it's a cellar. I, Down cellar. Down cellar. Oh, yeah. You can even leave the R off. Because if you want to talk like a true Vermonter, you leave the R's off. Look. Words that have R's. And then you just add them randomly to others. That I, I grew up in the basement. Calm down, I'm Christina. going to the basement. <laughs> I, oh, was, I would oh, go to the that's basement. That's because you grew up in a place where the basements were finished, sort of. Yeah, at a ping pong table. Okay. Well, when your basement isn't finished, like most people. And we had a black and white TV. Around here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, most basements around here have <laughs> rock imagine? walls Can and you? dirt and okay, rats. And there's so- cellars. <laughs> They're so, cellars. You, so you would not go to watch TV in the cellar. I sure wouldn't go watch TV in my cellar. <laughs> that sounds so creepy. We had a fancy it cellar was... that even had cement floor, and I still wouldn't go down into my <laughs> cellar to watch TV. Nope. Well, I don't think it's a great idea to put your children in the basement with a television either, because it freaked me out. Yeah. I was a prisoner of the of the black and white TV in the what basement. What did you watch down there? Like, Star what? Trek. Oh, no. Now I, so many and things have just come clear to me. <laughs> well, Dick. Okay. There was some other stuff, like Leave It to Beaver. I kind of remember Leave It to Beaver. Oh, I hate. <laughs> you hate don't them. hate Beaver. The Beaver. Come on, eat the Beaver. The Beaver. 
See, his you remember, parents were screwed you, up. I, fr- I, ha- I the dad who was like, "Honey, I'm home every night," and she <laughs> brought him like pipe and slippers. That kind of sh- it was that kind yeah, of show, wasn't it? There was a lot of shows like that. Huh. Pipe and slipper shows, we call them. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> with no sofas, one, no one calls sofas them that. Actually, with leather sofa, they didn't have leather sofas. They did. You can't say leather sofa. You can say leather couch, right? I- Sorry. No, try it. Say leather sofa. It doesn't leather work. Sofa. It doesn't work. Uh, I just looked up leather Chesterfield sofa and it came right up. That's different. Oh my God. I think you probably better play a song. Yeah, and get I us should. Off I'm the air sorry. For a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, I can get oh, back. It's snowing harder, Okay, so, so because we were late, we got here late. I'm going to have to clean off my car three times in one morning and I'm a little bit peeved about this. All right. What? So I got here late because it took so long to drive here. So I just took saw three songs from Val's new album, which he oh. gave me permission to play awesome. tracks off it because it's just I he's saw just, just posted that. Yeah, he just released it. So the first one is called uh, uh, "Stellar Girl." Here we go. <laughs> I can't hear myself now. I can hear me. Let's I see. can hear you. There we go. I can hear you. Yeah. No, my recorder died. Oh, no. That's okay. I can just work from the MP3 from the station. Okay. I'll just do that. I'm not going to fuss about it I now. I forgot how to get that already, but I guess I don't I really ever can, have to get it. I can download it. it. Yeah. No, I knew these batteries were going to run out. I just didn't know when they were going to run out. It's. I do have extras, but I don't think it's worth all the hassle. Now. Hassle, hassle, hassle. Hustle blod. Hustle blood. Hustle blood. I, I don't have a hustle blood. Do you? Uh, 
No. My dad used to have Hasselblad cameras. I have a... Um, it's a square format. Is that correct? Yeah. I always wanted one, and I always wanted a... Um, one of those four by five view cameras from the olden days. Large yeah. format, large format cameras. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So you're a dancer. Could you explain to me hip hop gestures? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? I'm throwing down signs. Okay. So that's a peace sign, but you use it in different ways, right? Uh, there's all kinds of. Like explain it. Cause I don't get it. There's every dance has its own. Huh. Sort of hand gestures. Yeah. An extension is another thing that involves your hands. Like in ballet, your middle finger leads you. Oh. Weirdly enough. Like when you're drinking tea. Sort of. Your middle finger. No, that's your pinky. Your pinky leads. No. Aristocratic. I mean, you, no, your pinky you sit on a, If you sit on a leather couch drinking tea, your pinky I should be up. I find that salsa dancing, you kind of do this little hang ten Hang ten, thing with your hands while okay. you're while you're moving them. But that, but you're doing you're doing that's the hip hop uh, that's the hip hop uh, hook 'em horns. No, that's up here. That's heavy metal. <sighs> no, yes. that's a hip hopper. No, well, doing it like that, like you're Those over are my your little head. Satan horns. Satan horns. You know what? what? This is I love you in sign language. It's very similar to the Satan yes. horns, which no, is weird. No, Satan horns, I think you curl your th- Yeah, the thumb, thumb is the difference. The thumb makes the difference. It's but also, I just it's think also that's at strange. school. This is quiet coyote when you want all the kids to be quiet. Quiet coyote. Ooh, quiet coyote. You hold it up and everyone's That's the to same symbol as hook them. Hook them and quiet coyote, same thing. See, this isn't really working because we're on the radio, so no one can see what we're doing. This is like nodding when you're on the telephone. Yeah, but people mm-hmm. know the hook them. The two, you got your index finger and your pinky up, and you got your two, mi- you but got then, the, the fingers that are left over. If you put the them middle, all down except down. for the pinky and the thumb, and then you can shake it and do the hang 10 thing. That's hang 10. Hang 10. But you only, have five, you only have five fingers. Why is it a hang 10? What's the hang 10 bit? I don't know. That's a, it's a surf thing. Okay, so look, this is a two finger salute. It's a sign, it's a peace sign that goes sideways. Yeah. Okay, but if you put it on your mouth, it means something bad. So don't. Uh, I think it, I think if you turn it this way, it's bad. No, that's peace. No, if you put it on your mouth. Oh, yeah. Then it becomes, and you stick out your tongue. And it becomes like, oh, I'm making fun of lesbians. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, well, that's okay. That's we'll leave that to everybody's imagination because there's okay. a, probably a bunch of bad things it could be. But how about loser? No. I had to. I had Christina, to learn that that's my, not loser. You're not yes, doing loser. This is loser. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> An I just. L. <laughs> I don't practice. I don't practice. Okay. This how, is still not a conversation that's working for radio because they can't see all the things. Okay. How about this one? Okay. This one. This is so is, us to do how, completely pointless things that no one can see. No, I can describe. I can describe this right. one. This is what you say, not, manja. Oh, she's manja. squeezing all of her little fingers together in a little thing. Now you have manja. to kiss. You have to kiss it. Mwah. Manja. But when you kiss it, then you open your fingers to spread the love. But, but this sign is also called this. T H I S. Okay. And the gay, it's. You try to get somebody to look at it. See, you just fought. I put it over here. I put my hand over here with that. <laughs> and you look. Well, now that you're saying a, it, I'm looking. It's a game. It's a game. Like, okay, not like I made you look. Not, I made you look. Remember looking. that game? Yeah. You stole your mother's pocketbook? Yeah. It's made the same. Cry, made it's you the same. Die. Stuck a needle in your eye. Yeah. Let's see. I have one here called You Ate It. I don't remember what that one is. Oh, is that the train? Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> Hall everything yeah because it might be going cross country here it comes it's coming through the snow today it's really going expensive. south i've been pricing it out for my kids eighth no. grade class trip it's really expensive you can go cross country for two hundred dollars uh you can't get to washington for very much we might even have them fly because no, i'm cheaper. telling you you can't listen here it comes listen to how much it costs <laughs> so much Shh. Don't wreck it. Sorry. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Hope you're happy. You wrecked it. 
<laughs> you associate, had to associate money with it. Sorry. It's not about money. It's quality, I'm not like, quantity. How can it be so expensive to go overnight on a train? Like, well, just take another train trip. You can take a cross country trip no, on a Greyhound going, for two hundred dollars. They're going to Washington D.C. and they have to go well, on the train. It'd apparently. be more fun to just sit on the train and go west and never come back. That'd be a great well, school eighth graders, trip. So I don't think we better do that with them. <laughs> I don't know. Ask them. Ask them what they want to do. Oh. I bet they'd like to do that. Man. I would. Man. I'll go. Man. Oh, you know your bedazzled cookbook from last week. We I didn't at- get that. I just oh. held it up. Oh, I thought you bought it. No, I said because remember the discussion. I got too many cookbooks I don't use, okay. so I'm not going to get another cookbook. Well, I'm not going to use. Christina and I were in the thrift store killing time before we had to do something. Oh, we just didn't want to go for muddy roads, I think. Yeah, we were avoiding going <laughs> home because the driving was going to be so bad. It's awful. Anyway, Christina holds up this Italian cookbook, which somebody had gone to town with, with like one of those bead bedazzlers. So it had these big, like rhinestones glued all over the cover. And I made fun of it. And I took a picture of it. And I posted it on Instagram. <laughs> and you just can't in a small town. My friend Caitlin was like, I totally gave the that, that. <gasps> <laughs> book to the thrift store. Really? She's really? like, that's my bedazzled cookbook. Yeah. That's very yeah. cool. I So... We, I often go so, in the thrift store and buy an object that one of my sisters just gave there. <laughs> so that's... That's right. This is what happens that's, in a small town. It's the danger of yes. giving your stuff, like giving your old clothes locally that's to the true. thrift store is that you might, they might show up on other people. You just have to be prepared for that. I don't think it's a big problem. Yeah. But... You just have to face face the facts of this might might be happening to you. Maybe. Yep. I feel bad because tonight's show that we're all in, the Mud Season Talent Show, is not really going to be a Mud Season show. It's like... It's Mud Season. It could be a Christmas show. Oh, you mean your dance is not about mud? Is that what you mean? You're like, uh, the, no. you haven't themed no, your dance I mean, to match the, the season? The, the talent show is called the Mud Season Talent Show. Although one year we did theme our dance to match mud, and I put us in... It's these beautiful Snow White outfits that I took some brown dye and we whapped at them with with splattered brown dye. So we were covered. It looked like we were covered from head to toe in mud. So that was cool. That's kind of cool. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, met those levels of awesome. You're not feeling as inspired this year. No. Well, by the way, do you, do you think, be- how do you like beige as a house color? On the inside or outside? Outside. Um, It's okay. No, it's not. Why? It's fine. Are we talking about? Is that good enough? Fine. Oh, it's fine. Would you want someone to drive by your house and go? It's fine. It actually beige or cream colored houses look quite beautiful with very very white trim. You just kind of reverse things. Yeah, not beige. I mean, it depends what style of house. Maybe some maybe some variation on a a cape or a colonial or something off white. Very classic. Off white, going towards say bone or vanilla, but not. Beige, excuse me. Oh, I mean, just okay. the word itself, it just brings you back to the 50s when you're locked in the basement with a black and white television and a ping pong table. Beige is, does not sound like <laughs> that was my a story. 60s word. I'm sad. Go, I told, we had this conversation. <laughs> Rust, avocado, goldenrod. Oh, right. Colors. Um, Gold. Burnt orange. Those are all 60s colors. More than beige, I think. I said 50s, Mustard. didn't I? Mustard. Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't around in the 50s. Yes, I was. No, you're not. I was born in 57. Oh, barely. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, barely in 57. I was almost into 58. I admit it. I know. I was like... You are I was a just... very late winter baby, so you can't... No, don't early, even pretend, early... Don't even pretend you get the whole 50s as your birth well, time. Well, okay. I don't. I don't actually feel attached to the fifties in any way. I don't. I. I, I don't, don't. Well, I was born in the seventies, but do you feel attached to the seventies? Not so much. I don't really remember them. No, I am more attached to the sixties. I've heard that no one remembers the seventies, so I can't be all alone. Just no because one? I was a child and not on drugs. I was be. there. Excuse me. Okay. I remember the seventies. All right. I like the pants. In yeah. fact, when I look Bell back bottoms. at my childhood clothing i wish i had all of them in adult sizes now i had some awesome corduroy overalls and some yeah. nice like, patchwork looking yeah stuff yeah and they were all gold avocado 
brown. Yeah. Goldenrod. Okay. Hmm. Anyway. I, I, okay. I, I right. bought myself a present this week. What? I got a sonic slider. I don't know what that is. Surprise, surprise. Huh. There's a lot of things you don't know about me. Yeah. Secrets that I keep from you. <laughs> Well, just imagine, what could a sonic slider be? Is it what one of those banana slicers? Because those are just lame. Like, can you just slice a banana with a knife like a regular person? Uh, nope, not that. Why? Who invented the banana slicer? No. That's Come on. just stupid. Don't evade the question, sonic no, slider. I don't know what your sonic, sonic slider is. What does sonic mean? I don't even know. Sound. Sonic. I don't think it means sound. Slider. So sliders are like a hamburger. So that a small hamburger about the hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog. Maybe it it's a singing hamburger. What? Oh. <laughs> Sonic Boom. Oh, okay. There's words that do have something to do with sound. No, I'm a vegetarian. I wouldn't have a singing hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had to have a hamburger, I bet you'd pick the singing one over the not singing one. Possibly. Good Although point. then you'd feel extra bad when you ate it. Because <laughs> it would just remind you of the fact that it was once alive. It might still be, because why else would it be singing? <laughs> I'm glad we're thinking about these potential issues instead of our own real lives. And this is why nobody needed to do drugs in the 70s <laughs> or now, because clearly you don't need because them. Because I completely don't. completely insane. Yeah. No, okay, Sonic <clears throat> Slider is a tuning fork. Doom. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. But is it, a, is it an a electronic Sonic? one, though? No. It's a beautiful tuning fork that was made by Eileen McCusick. I don't know who that and is. And you strike it on your palm, and Whoa. you take, you hold it like a pencil, sort of, so that you're not impeding the vibration on the t- on the tines or t- what do you call them? Tines, t- tines. Are you talking <laughs> about a thumb harp? No. There are a lot of things that vibrate. So, and tuning forks just have a very pure kind of vibration that can be calibrated to a certain frequency. Those are the, that's the thing that like Pavlov used to train his dog, right? No, he used electric shocks, for goodness no, sakes. No, the Pavlov's, Pavlov's dog thing, he would hit the tuning fork and then immediately give the dog food. And then after a while, he would hit the tuning fork Boy, and not give this food, is and the, the dog would start to drool because the, the dog associated. You have the, the sanitized sound. version because I guess in the twenty years time since the uh, since that they switched it up so it wouldn't upset children. What he used electric shocks to shock dogs? No, he did. I yes, he did. Well, not at the same experiment. This is the Mandela effect. They I was changed just, the Pavlov's I was just experiment thinking now. Thinking about this because looking, don't check Wikipedia because Wikipedia not, I'm not has touching, jumped timelines. Not touching my phone. Okay, <laughs> I was that's a scary about thing. That phone. Watch out, dog. Because when Eli was having a guitar lessons with Patrick Ross this week, his lovely dog Stella was running around outside, I love and he Stella. went. I do too. She snuggles with me every lesson, but it was running around outside, and she didn't come back when he called. So he said, watch this. And he got a tiny little air horn off the shelf. And he said, you've trained her like Pavlov's dog because she doesn't like the... And the air horn you can hear forever. Well, he's part of your generation, so you have so the sanitized honked version. honked the air horn, and then Stella came bounding back quickly over the fields. Great. Well, this is what... So. <clears throat> yeah, this is what happens. This is what's happened to Fruit Loops and Ed McMahon as well. What about Ed McMahon? Star Search! I loved that show. Do you, asso- it do you associate Ed McMahon with Publishers Clearinghouse? Um, no, I associate with Star Search. Hey, you're too young. This is another... No, I remember Publishers Clearinghouse, too. Okay. Well, this is another point of controversy for people who study the Mandela Effect, and you'll impress your sister, Jen, if you say, oh, Ed McMahon, and give her a little wink, right? Okay. Give her yeah. a little wink and yeah. see what she says. Okay. I'm going to see. save the best for last. Poor Jen. Okay, so... She shot her hand in her car door yesterday. Oh, gosh. And she, it even latched. That. It latched on no, her hand. No, Yeah. That, and so mm. all my dancers are dropping like flies. I lost like nine of them oh, just in the last Jen. couple of days because everybody's got the flu or they're Jen. gone. Or Je- And then Jen calls up and she said, crying, I've, la- I've latched my no. hand in my car. So mom drove her to the hospital for x-rays. It's not actually break- broken. It's God. her finger, really. But it really hurts. I'm sorry. She's sad. Okay. Good so this will be good a good vi- thing to good cheer her up. vibrations. This whole oh, Mandela to... effect will cheer her up greatly. Fantastic. Okay, time for a song. Other people have discovered Okay, it. this is also a Val's album, and okay, this is the song, song that I wrote with him called Shadiggy. Uh, 
Isn't that the name of the whole album? Yeah. Ooh. So it's a title track. Uh, let's see if I can get us to start. Here we go. Sleeping in motion On the passenger side Suspended still In the trembling will Of her blackened eyes Yes, there'd be hell to pay But that he justified For the dream was cruel And its beauty made a fool Of any man who tried Can't see And now heaven's open Drown in me Can it be A promise broken With nothing spoken Just unclean This bitter river I can't quit her Tether me He followed the wire to the high chaparral in the empty field. What was not revealed was her biggest tell. He knew he had nothing. Nothing to hide As his mind got clear He could feel the fear And the love collide Can't see Now heaven's open Drown in me Can it be A promise broken With nothing spoken, just unclean This bitter river, I can't quit her Tether me Shattergy But the long-edged blade Of the winter wind on the outer plains And the disappearing road he lost And the line he never ever crossed And in the shallow sun The unseen light He'd thrown his heart to the ragged night Of her skin, wagered his life for a horse he couldn't win. Sting of surrender. Plea. What he knew was right 
شرگی Okay, that was Val McCallum. Oh, Off his new album, Shadagi. Put my earphone on backwards. So let me just go back to the tuning fork because I just want to tell you, just we don't have to talk about it a lot, but I want to tell you what it's for. Okay, it's a unique therapeutic, well, biofield tuning is a unique therapeutic method using, using tuning forks on the body and in the biomagnetic field that surrounds and interpenetrates the body to counter stress and induce deep relaxation. Is tuning fork only one tone? Yeah. So you can only tune things to, like, one... Well, there's different tuning forks if you want different tuning forks. So you can go around, like, banging a whole bunch of metal pieces to tune something? I sound, I don't really know how this works. Yeah. What's a tuning fork for, other than all that stuff Actually, for tuning, tuning an instrument, too. So, like a perfect A, so, you know, but you'd need if you one have, for, for like an A and a G and a D. Like you'd need one for all of those. Well, yeah, yeah. If you're huh. trying to tune that way, but usually, they like look an, an orchestra, a little bit. My or dad used to have a whole set of tuning forks that he would that were mounted onto boxes to to amplify oh. the Can sound. You play music with a whole set of tuning forks because they are different. Well, I suppose you could keys or I, whatever, right? Yeah, I suppose you could. Like if you mounted them. And they become sort of an upright xylophone. Yeah, it's possible somebody does that. I mean, people play water glasses and things. So right, right. There was a guy who used to play the wrench phone in the uh, Tunbridge Civic Club show. How did that go? Pete Jorgensen. He mounted all these wrenches like an xylophone, and then huh. he would play music with it. It was actually pretty. Huh, great. I bet that could work. Why yeah, not? The wrench phone. You looks know, cool. When I feed my cats, yeah, they they each have their own bowl. And each bowl is different, oh, yeah. you know, because I shop at the thrift store for all my dishware. So I've got three you know very, the sound very of their different. Bowl. Yeah. So when I call them to get their tuna so fish, I hit the, the bowl. The spoon. Yeah. And each one yeah. has a different tone. It's kind of amazing. Huh. It's just like you're talking about making music from ordinary objects. Cool. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Life is hard. Well, I'm just, I just keep side eye glancing at the snow <laughs> yeah but we could get a muffin i mean i am gonna get a muffin but i have a problem because i usually can't decide whether to get one or two because i think one and a half muffins is probably the exact right amount of what i want but once you have the two you're not gonna like cut the second one in half and you'll only have half you're they gonna go need all... to make their muffins bigger or smaller because if they're a little smaller you're fine totally fine with two if they're a well, little bit bigger then I... you're just fine with one yeah, it depends on your appetite. You know, if you're kind of a big hoarder hog, <laughs> like me, okay, a big hoarder you're hog. A hoarder hog. Well, I am with muffins. With something like a muffin, I just feel like it's Are such like a huge treat. Stuffing them down your pants or something. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, I just don't get so excited by a muffin because it's like a big up in my day. I just, I just it's never a big on up. A muffin bandwagon. It's like driving, going on a roller coaster and being like way up at the top. I don't like that. I don't like roller coasters. Well, I don't either. But I was just saying that to be sort of have use colorful I'm metaphors. Not, not super into muffins. I feel bad or scones. I know you love scones. Yeah, and muffins a lot. Yeah, I just, I it just know. doesn't work for you. I like a it good, too. fresh corn muffin with butter. Okay. So you like savory. I like savory. Not so over much sweet. the sweet. I like the big chunks of fruit. That oh, no. That's just not right. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the worst when you eat a muffin and there's some like, oh, chewy, unidentifiable the... thing like a craisin it's or something in it. A craisin? Like a cran raisin. <laughs> that's not unidentifiable. Well. It is when you first bite into it, and it's just chewy and strange. Usually they have labels. When you go to buy a muffin, you can see what type it is. Oh, I know. And so you pick one that you like the fruit. But just just stop putting things in my muffins and my brownies. Stop with the cooked nuts. Okay. Stop. There's two kinds fruit, of people. Fruit is perfect all on its own. Why do we have to suck all the water out of it and then put it in our baked goods? It's all, like I say, there's two types of people in the there world. There can't be any nutrition left in it once it's all shriveled all up and then baked. Life is not just about good nutrition. Life is oh, about I know. enjoyment. I'm the one who eats the Fruit Loops. <laughs> fruit 
loops. Okay, but okay, I can't just, put all those I those don't, pieces don't together, those disparate parts of your personality. Yeah, like from we going from Fruit Loops to corn muffins, just is a huge back leap for me. Of the Fruit Loop box, they have recipes that you can use Fruit Loops in. Like oh, you can no. crush them up and add them to things. Yeah, or you can like make a Fruit Loop parfait and like you know people have jobs figuring out those yogurt. recipes. And I would not do that as much as I like occasional good bowl of Fruit Loops. I'm not going to cook with my Fruit there Loops. There are whole home ec departments that are working on those types of recipes with Fruit Loops and breadcrumbs. And I think it's the modern version of how our moms always put cornflakes in everything. My my mom didn't use cornflakes. Oh, okay. She used rice checks. That oh. was her cereal of choice for oh. toppings with butter. That could work. Never thought of that it one. It does work, except now it doesn't work because there's so many chemicals in these cereals. I wonder if you compared the Rice ingredients. Rice seems so naked. Look at it. It looks naked. I know, naked. but if you look at there's like 30 ingredients in a rice check. But 30 I, seems My little. question would be, when they first came out, did they have all those ingredients? I think it no. is because they had, all these corporations were trying to get rid of extra stuff. Like they have extra re- residual chemicals and things that they needed to sell <laughs> to food processing companies to, to create, you know, a, a new consumer market. It's really they brilliant. Didn't. They didn't have all the stuff. And you yeah, know what? They, they don't did. have all the stuff in other, did you You see? don't realize how evil the world is. You're very naive. I do. If you compare, <laughs> if you compare the ingredients list on um, any any food product, some sort of processed food product that's sold in the U.S., and then any exact same product that's sold in the U.K., they have about half as many ingredients for the exact same product in the U.K. Yeah, or anywhere. I think most of places in Europe. Yeah, they have more stringent rules. Yeah, yeah. So they're. Doing something right over there. They're doing but a lot of stuff wrong, too. They put but. their milk in bags and don't refrigerate it. And I'm sort of weird about that. And they have really tiny refrigerators. I don't understand. They just have less stuff that needs to be refrigerated. And that makes me wonder, why? Because they have a high tolerance for sour food. No. Well, no. yogurt yogurt they, they didn't start in America. And yet they have less refrigeration, too. So how are they doing that? Because Americans don't like yogurt so much. And they don't like things fermented unless it's wine. I don't... Uh, what? I think that you have said it just made any sense. <laughs> Americans don't like things fermented so Well, much. they just are a little fussy about their food, whereas the Europeans like things that are curdled. Um, you can quote me, but we, ha- <laughs> we have to get off the air. Thank so goodness. I'm going to play one last song. Okay, okay. Um, this one last song is called Ridge Runner, also off Val McCallum's new album, Shattagy. Cool. And uh, I did not co-write this. I think both they are actually co-wrote this with Val. So nice. Um, and it's about somebody. Mostly, you can try to figure out who it's who it's about. Okay. Uh, so we'll be back next week, as long as we're not stuck God in the mud willing. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, we'll get home today. Aww. And uh, if no one out there who actually listens to this show and who knows me in person doesn't hear from me. <laughs> In the next couple hours, send in the troops. Send the tow trucks. Yeah. You'll probably get stuck on my road, too. Tractors and tow trucks. Oh, my goodness. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye, guys.